Red, White, and Royal Blue, the New York Times bestseller, coming to Prime Video on August 11th. We're getting a new motion picture. Plus, there's a new motion picture edition of the book that is now available. The author, Casey McQuiston, here uh, to chat about it. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. So there's so much anticipation for the film, but also people to rediscover the book or read it for the first time. Tell me what this summer has been like uh, for you. I mean, it's been wild partially because while all of this has been happening, I've been so, so deep in the trenches of drafting my fourth book. Um, and so my it's like my mind is split between past and present, between the world of that book and the world of this book, um, which is kind of a beautiful piece for the senses and kind of extremely disorienting. Um, but it's it's been amazing just to, I think, everyone's excitement for the book has been infectious to me and kind of reigniting my love for this book. You know, I, I wrote it in 2016 and 2017 and it's feels like a million years ago. Um, and I find myself going back through, you know, my old notes from when I was drafting and my old playlists from when I was editing and really feeling so grateful and nostalgic and and so much renewed love for these characters and this this world that really really changed my life um so yeah it's been like a, a fun very sensuous creative um exciting summer and, and speaking of, of going back to the notes uh let's talk a little bit about the character of alex because alex and and henry are, are two main characters in the uh in the novel but alex's journey is I've heard it's a little bit similar to, to yours. Do you want to chat maybe a little bit about creating that character? Yeah, I mean, people always, I think, ask authors, you know, which of your characters is most like you? And, you know, I'm four books in now, if you count the one I just finished writing. And I still feel like Alex is the one who most closely feels like a kindred spirit to me you know um we have the same moon and rising sign for whatever that's worth <laughs> um and he's just I, I really I so deeply relate to like the too muchness of him um I like I like to joke that Alex and I are alike because we're both annoying but but what I mean by that is that we're both people who can be really intense and really driven almost to the point of like self-destruction you know um and specifically in terms to like his journey that he goes on in the book with discovering his sexuality I mean I think it's very it was very very similar to to my experience where um you know I it seems silly to call 20 or 21 or 22 later in life now that I'm 32 but at the time it felt like 20 was so old to be figuring out that I was not straight and that, you know, there was all of this other stuff going on for me. And so I really wanted to write a character who thinks that he knows everything there is to know about himself and then just gets smacked with this huge realization that there's something much deeper that he never realized was there and that he can't really deny anymore because that was what the experience was like for me was, was looking around and realizing like, oh, I have some things to learn about myself um and and I, it was not an experience that I had seen or read a lot um in media and so I really wanted to write something that people who had had that experience could relate to especially to you know in America we've seen so many young women in, in the White House you know whether it was Jenna and Barbara Bush and Sasha and Malia Obama but there really hasn't been a young guy who we've seen, especially in the social media time, kind of have to go through that same scrutiny or the same journey or, you know, what their life is like, because like the White House and the Royals, you know, there's official social media pages, but we don't get to see what their daily life is like. And the, especially with, you know, reading the book and, and seeing the film is that this is a whole new world that you get to look into that we really don't have, uh, have a vision of or that we've been able to see in, in recent times here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, it's interesting when you Put it that way, I really am like trying, racking my brain, trying to think of the last time we had a first son, um, or at least a first son who was young enough for people to be like, ooh, what's he up to? You know, um, and I, I, I mean, I, I'm going back to like, I mean, it's probably, I would have to be probably like in the, like the 70s, um, 
And yeah, I was really, when I was coming up with the character of Alex, I was really drawn to the idea of somebody who would be like this young Kennedy type, you know, where he's sort of the scion of this like emerging political legacy, but he's also like a tabloid darling. And he's, you know, people are, you know, speculating that he's hooking up with movie stars and they're, they want to know what he's wearing and they want to know who he's dating and they want to know what he's doing. And he kind of thrives on that attention and, and knows how to use it to his advantage. I thought that was such an interesting character to explore. Um, and, you know, yeah, I have watched the media kind of tear apart generations of first daughters. And, you know, I was, I was really interested in the idea of, of exploring, you know, what that looks like when, um, someone is able to harness it for their own use, you know, um, but of course it does end up getting away from them too. <laughs> and we got to talk a little bit about Henry because I love the way that you write both the, you know, the American version and the British sense of humor because two different types of mm, styles of, yeah, of humor yeah. that you, I think you just nail perfectly in this, uh, in this book. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's it is so like Alex, I feel like it's just like such an all American character. Like he's, you know, so many things that like if you go to Europe, they will like say all Americans are, which is just like a like a bit crass, like very direct, very like like workaholic, very and just uh, uncouth at times, um, you know, over like very familiar and very outgoing and very straightforward and then it was really fun to kind of play with with this kind of culture clash idea of like someone who is very all-american is somebody who's literally like the quintessential british gentleman you know i mean doesn't get much more british gentleman than literally a member of the royal family and it was so fun to take those sort of archetypes and, and play them off of each other. Um, but yeah, Henry is Henry is so much fun to write because his sense of humor can be so sneaky and so subtle. I mean, I think um, I, I think I'm like a huge I'm like a huge Eddie Izzard fan, and she has this like really amazing um, she has like this really amazing bit that she does talking about like American like huge American blockbuster movies versus British blockbuster movies. And um, she just says, you know, every British blockbuster is just people in rooms arranging matches, you know, and, and, and a room with a view of the lake and things like that. And I think that is just the difference between Alex and Henry is like, Henry is like subtlety and is like understated and is going to surprise you when he comes out with some kind of cutting jab. And um, that is, just as much fun to write as it is to have a character like Alex who will just say anything that comes to his mind. You know, one thing too, you know, when I think about, especially the new re-released version of, of the book, is that where you grow up, sometimes you might have access to an indie bookstore. You might have access to a, a place where you feel comfortable, you know, picking out books or that books are available that represent you. And, you know, certain parts of the country, people necessarily don't always have that resource. And, you having this, you know, brand new book, you know, or this new version of the book coming out that people are going to be able to see that's in their big box stores. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does that feel like for you, especially like, you know, we have Alex, we have Henry, we have Cash, we have Amy, you know, all this book, all on different journeys that everyone can kind of see themselves in. Yeah. I mean, it's wild. I'm, I'm from Southern Louisiana and, you know, where I grew up, we didn't have an indie bookstore. Like there was, there was not an indie bookstore I got to like hang out at when I was a kid. It was either the library or it was, you know, Barnes and Noble, or it was, you know, the media section at Walmart where you've got like five mass market bodice rippers and like six Glenn Beck essay collections, you know? Um, and it's, it is wild to know that, the kid that I was could walk with their mom through Walmart and now look around and see this book. I think that's like the accessibility of that, you know, to me is, is so gratifying and so cool and so mind blowing. Um, just that it's available to, to kids who, not kids, but like readers, like queer readers who need it, but, but especially young queer readers, people who, um, who need to see that kind of, reflection of themselves when they go to Walmart because they live in like rural Tennessee and they have to drive 30 minutes to get to the super Walmart like where is that person going to go to like 
their small indie bookstore and have some beautiful queer bookseller hand sell them, you know, a new queer rom-com. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing to me that, that these books can be accessible now. And I never, I really honestly never thought I would ever see one of my queer books in Walmart. And now they're like in my hometown Walmart, which is amazing. That is amazing. Well, congratulations on all your success. Of course, cannot wait for the fourth book to come out. But of course, fans right now can go ahead and check out Red, White, and Royal Blue, the film coming to Prime Video on August 11th. And of course, the new motion picture edition of the book is now available. And uh, Casey, uh, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you.